everyone, Beverly here. So glad you could join me um, for a new episode of If They Did, I Can. <laughs> so let's go for it. <laughs> Today I'm going to share about a phenomenal lady, really. She, she truly was a pioneer in her field um, and pioneer for women. But uh, she accomplished so much at such a young age, really. Today I'm going to talk about Netta Snook. Netta Snook, or Snooky as she came to be known, was born in 1896 in Iowa. As a teenager, they, she grew up in a place or a town called Ames, Iowa. There she went to school in 1915. She graduated high school. She did finishing school, of course, as all the young ladies of the day would. And then um, she went to Iowa State. Iowa State College, for those outside the USA. So at Iowa State, you know, in that day, girls, ladies had to do one course, which was home economics. But um, Netta, not to be deterred, she did her home economics course and then took extra classes where she studied mechanical drawing, combustive engines and um, combustive mechanics and how to take apart and build a tractor engine. You know, Netta's dad, I would love to just give a shout out to her father. I don't know much about him. There's not much said about him. But we do know that he loved automobiles and mechanics and such. And he um, nurtured that interest that his daughter had. And he taught her the ways of like building and mechanics and the car engines. And um, that was useful for Netta as she grew up because she would go on. I'm not going to get ahead of it. <laughs> anyway, Netta would say herself that she spent most of her time at the college library. And there she read about the hot air balloon travel and that which was taking place and all the excitement in that. And she also um, read about planes and such. And uh, her interest was not just sp sparked, but fired up. She read about heavier than aircraft planes that were powered by mechanical methods and in her own words basically I definitely wanted to learn to fly so Netta was hooked you know she while at college she applied to the one aviation school in the country which was Glenn Curtis Flying School in Virginia but unfortunately she was rejected because she was a female However, Netta was not to be deterred. She would not give up. She would not quit. I'm sure she was disappointed, but, you know, she has this memory. When she was a young girl, when they lived, um, the, her family doctor, their family doctor owned a model T Ford, like that'd be cool. So he took her with her as he did some house calls and they drove along the country roads. And like, you know, when it goes in the hill, like, woo. So they would pretend and they would call that flying. And the, the seed for flying, the seed for the freedom of flying was sown into Netta's life at that time. So, you know, Netta, um, she was not going to give up on this dream. No way. It was a part of her. It was her destiny. She knew it. So there was a, she was reading a newspaper or I don't know if she was reading the newspaper, but it says she's seen in a paper this school and flying school that had opened in Davenport or Davenport and it was taking a mission. So she applied, she got accepted and when she arrived to the promise of like wonderful machinery and great planes, <laughs> she arrived with that class. Uh, she was the only female in the class and she arrived along with them to discover that the students themselves had to build the planes. There were no planes ready. It wasn't fancy, it wasn't amazing, it was advertised. But hey, it was a flying school and she was in. So Netta, you know, rolled up her sleeves and got going with the guys and they built a plane and and they started flying. They started flying. But unfortunately, the plane crashed and the school closed down. <laughs> it's not a laughing matter. Because um, Netta was about to do her first solo flight. But unfortunately, that incident you know brought a halt to that so some of the guys in the class they were going to go to the uh, Glenn Curtis Flying School in Virginia the official the first school that there was and they said they would put a good word in for her so Netta applied and this time she got accepted 
gonna read you a quote from there about flying. I just thought it was so beautiful. She said, finally the day came, my first flight. We raced down the field, the engine roaring and all eight cylinders firing in perfect time. I felt the chill lift but scarcely knew when we left the ground. I had no feeling of height, only of complete security with those long sleek wings on either side which seemed almost a part of me. If anyone was destined to fly, it Neto was destined to fly. It was in her DNA and I'm so glad that she made it. So in 1917, she finally got accepted into the Glen Curtis Flying School in Virginia. However, the, due to World War I, the school got shut down because there was, you know, the possibility of spies infiltrating and, and different things. So anyway, everything was shut down just before she was going to get her first solo flight. Now, Glenn Curtis, he had another school in Florida, so he moved there and Nettle followed him. Obviously, they had a great rapport, a great student-teacher rapport, and um, Netta thought a lot of Glenn. So she followed him down there, and uh, she began her training again and was about to get take her first solo flight down there in Florida when the order came through, through from the president that all civilian flights, um, all civilian licenses, pilots, was forbidden, was cancelled, and stopped. Again, Netta was just at the edge, she was just at the point of getting her first solo flight and everything got shut down, another roadblock. You know, I don't know, I'm sure she was disappointed a bit, but she, one thing's for sure, she didn't stop, she didn't sit down, she didn't quit, and um, she kept going on. A friend um, referred her, or mentioned her, um, to the British war effort, war team, that was working in New York, and she got this job of being an expediter. Now, an expediter was someone who took the parts of the planes and such, and steel and different pieces that were coming from the USA to the UK for the planes in the war effort there. She had a big responsibility, and she did her job. And at the end of the war, the British War Council, they rewarded her, they honoured her with a certificate acknowledging all that she had done. Now, also, at the end of the war, the USA government, they granted her, and I'm sure other pilots, a license. A, like, a, um, not like a federal recognised license, but a license, um, however it said, they were not allowed to have any passengers, to fly any passengers. They were allowed to fly, but not take passengers. So, this is the don't try this at home part. Definitely, do not try this at home. I'm not recommending this, this is my disclaimer, <laughs> but Netta said that her and other pilots, they just like scored out the N on none, so it said one, one passenger, <laughs> so then that was them, they just set about taking passengers on flights, so Netta bought this old um, Canuck plane, Canuck, I think it's a Canadian model. She bought this old plane that was like not flying, not in a good state, and she got it shipped or transported to her parents' home in Iowa. Um, Netta then, like she'd accomplished so much already, but she had accomplished so much and pioneered so much and still was on the verge herself, you know, of just going that bit further that she needed to, that she wanted to. So she enrolled in Iowa State again and spent her time building this plane. She built it, she got it ready, and uh, much to the amusement of the people um, in the area, they all came around saying, how are you going to get this plane out of this wee garden? Does it fly straight up? No, what she did, of course, was she took the plane, the wings of the plane off, and then they transported it to a, like a large field area that was near to the college. She was going to use this as her airstrip. <laughs> Netta said, I'm not quoting directly, but she said, you know, I was so busy focusing and building the plane and making sure that the plane would fly that I never even thought about me, whether I could fly, but I knew I could fly. She knew she could fly, but remember, this is her first solo flight. No instructor in sight. Well, she took off and she flew. <laughs> That's hilarious, isn't it? Anyway, she did it. She did it. And she began taking, um, doing this thing called barnstorming. 
in the area. It must be like jobs, maybe like crop dusting. I'm not sure, but like she did that, and she also like took passengers up for a wee 15 minute flight. She charged 15 dollars, and she said if there was a long line, you know, I would cut the time in half, and nobody seemed to mind because people just were really happy to get back down on the ground and say they had flown in an airplane. I think at that time I probably would have been too. Anyway, there we go. So what happened from then? She did that and then, you know, the weather, the weather. You can't fly in snow, you can't fly in ice. And I always get in a lot of snow, a lot of ice. And so, um, thankfully, um, let me see, Bert, sorry, <laughs> Bert Kenner. He had an airstrip, an airfield near Huntington Park in um, California. So, Netta had heard about Bert and his Kenner Airsters, which were planes, his planes. So she flew, she went down there, she arrived down there in California with him and she said, hey Bert, well I don't know if she said hey Bert, but I'm sure it went something like this, hey Bert, I'll do you a deal, how about I test plane, I'll be the test pilot for your planes if you grant me commercial access to your airfield, whereby I will be able to do um, commercial passenger flying, and do aerial flying stunts and um, train, flying lessons. Train pilots do flying lessons. Bert agreed and thus Netta Snook, or Snooky as she was lovingly known, became the first woman to own a commercial aviation business. What a pioneer. You know what, at the age of 22, she was such um, a forerunner for women in aviation. Not just for women, but for the field of aviation. She was, uh, her contribution was enormous. And she was doing what she could to show everyone that women could also give a valuable contribution in this fledgling field. Netta, there she was, California, doing her lessons, doing her stunts. You know, she started to, she was doing that, what, 1921, December 1921. A dad, a father and his daughter walks in into to, to the flying lesson office. This young daughter, this girl, she wanted to learn to fly. And her name was Amelia Earhart. Amelia Earhart became the student of Netta Snook. I think that's amazing. Netta Snook. Uh, she wrote an autobiography later on. It was published in 1974. I... I taught Amelia to fly. Netta Snook taught Amelia Earhart to fly. Amelia went on to like fly across the Atlantic and become the first lady, the first flyer. Everyone knows about Amelia. And unfortunately, uh, part of her story is that she was flying, I believe it was around the globe, like somewhere she went missing over the Pacific. We might go into Amelia's story some at some point, but today let's focus on Netta Snook um, taught Amelia to fly. You know, Netta fell in love and she married a man, um, Bill Southern, you know, or William Southern. Forgive me if I mix his name up. And uh, Netta really wanted a baby, a healthy baby. A healthy baby was so important. And she said, if I would have a healthy baby, I'm, I'm guessing it was a prayer, but I don't know for sure. If I have a healthy baby, I will never fly again. I'm, I'll step back from being a pilot and the whole industry because she really wanted a healthy child that she could raise and pour into. And she was blessed. And she had a um, healthy baby boy called William Curtis Southern. William after his father and Curtis after Glenn Curtis, her mentor. You know, and true to her word, that was Netta stepped away and she she stepped back and stepped out of the field of aviation so that she could raise her family. You know, she had accomplished so much. She was among one of the first female pilots in the USA. I would guess the world. You know, she was um I believe she was one among the first to actually build an airplane. And then she was the first to do you know, she was actually the first to enter into a flying race with men and out of 40 men she came fifth. And she was the first, obviously as we said, to have a commercial business in the field of aviation. Wow. If she did it, you can.
Now, I'm not saying that you're going to be a pilot or that's your dream. Maybe it is. But whatever your dream is, whatever is in your heart, whatever you believe is, is your destiny. Don't give up. Don't stop at the hurdles. We see how many roadblocks were in her way, but she just jumped over them and kept going on. Netta lived to the age of 90, 95, the ripe old age of 95, where she passed away. And then the year after she passed away, she was inducted into the Iowa Aviation Hall of Fame. She left a mark that could not be erased. If she did it, whatever it is, whether it's raising it, you see how important raising a family was to her? She left a mark that will never be erased. She, she, she raised her family. She looked after her family and did what she believed she needed to do. And her aviation career was before all, all happened before she was 25. So, be encouraged today. Go ahead. If they did, I can. <laughs>